At 11 o'clock this morning, everything seemed to just stop. Streets were deserted across our region as people watched the funeral at home, in pubs, at places of worship, or came together at big screens placed in numerous locations. Our reporters joined some of you as you marked the passing of our Queen. flowers over in front of the civic halls. She'll be looking down now with her late husband, she'll come from Edinburgh and she'll think, brilliant day. To look back and see happy memories about the Queen. I'm glad that I get to enjoy it with my family and get to watch it, but I'm a bit sad that she's passed. She served the country absolutely magnificently. I didn't really want to be on my own today because it's such an emotional day and I'm never going to experience this again. Um, so I just felt as though I wanted to be here, you know, with other people. We're all here for one reason. I think it's been wonderful for a small village to pay its respects to our dear departed queen, who has ruled with total um, dignity and devotion. And it's our way of saying goodbye to her. I'd like to just raise a toast to Queen Our Majesty Queen Elizabeth yeah, II. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. God save the king. God save the king. God save the king. wanted to, um, to pay our respects alongside with others um, and to show that we are also uh, part of the community and we are also um, saddened by the fact that the Queen has passed away because she was not just the Queen for the Christian community, she was the Queen for the whole country. As a mother, grandmother and a great-grandmother myself, I know what she's been through and how stoic she's been. I'm so proud, so proud. They would remember this very sad day. We decided to come here so that they could see this historical event where they would remember for a very long time. It was very sad. I thought she was going to live up to 100. We enjoy the freedom in this country, perhaps, which is not you know, available in many countries. Uh, for that reason, we are very appreciative, you know, especially to this country and, of course, to the monarchy as well. There won't be another one, not like this, in a long time. So, a mark of respect to the Queen, we had to be here. It's such a lovely, special um, occasion and such an important historical day. I, I felt it would be nice to be part of a community. That's how some of you watched the funeral across our region today. Of course, many people wanted to travel to London to be part of this historic occasion. Tom Ingle joined a coach full of Barnsley residents who made the journey south this morning. morning. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Scarcely can the bus stops of Barnsley Interchange have been so busy so early in the day. About 300 in total, about 320, I think, total on upcoaches and minibuses. Are you surprised by how popular that has been? Not after going to London to see Queen Lining State and how busy it were, no. 5am was no obstacle for those determined to say goodbye to Her Majesty in person. I was very emotional when the Queen died, so just pay my respects. I miss her so much because she was the Queen, the best Queen. We don't think we're going to see much, but there's going to be big screens up, apparently. Today we're off down to London, for the, unfortunately, for the sad that the Queen's funeral. 
The darkness gave way to a dull morning, which in turn revealed an M1 almost empty. Yorkshire Rose coaches say the phone started ringing immediately after the death of the Queen was announced, looking to book a ticket. I just wanted to come and just be part of it. I'm not saying we're going to see very much, but just be part of it. I've been in the NHS for 30 years and she's been the head of that and I wanted to just pay my respects. Everyone on board was making a personal pilgrimage. Your Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, thank you. We will miss you. Our heartfelt condolences to your wonderful, beautiful family who are doing you so proud. God save the King from Tyler. She's been our gaffer for quite a while while we're all in, to, well, me and Colin are Armed Forces and on behalf of the uh, Yorkshire Cavalry guys who can't make it here. Uh, so we're, we're here for them, for representing them. It's not long before we're all making our way across Hyde Park to find a vantage point. The crowd silently listens to the sounds of the funeral service, relayed over speakers from Westminster Abbey, some two miles to our east. But then the atmosphere steadily builds in verve and vigour as the funeral procession itself approaches. Finally, in front of the Royal Albert Hall, after four hours of travelling and another three waiting patiently at the railings, comes the moment for the people who've travelled from South Yorkshire to pay their final respects to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and be part of history. It's well worth the wait. It's been a long day. I was so emotional. Uh, again, the, the turnout was absolutely fantastic. Uh, nice to see the young element taking part. Uh, just a fantastic day. Uh, glad I came. A moment the nation paused and bade farewell. A story to be told back home in Yorkshire forever. Tom Ingle, BBC Look North, London. It's certainly a day they won't forget, isn't it? 2,000 people were on the guest list at today's funeral. Kings, queens, presidents and dignitaries from around the world. And joining them were two Yorkshire women invited because of their work in their communities. Nancy O'Neill and Tina Leslie were both awarded MBEs by the Queen. Tina has been campaigning to end period poverty, whilst Nancy, a former nurse, headed Bradford's COVID task response. I caught up with them both this afternoon, starting with Tina. Um, it was surreal. It was like I wasn't there. It was like, how, how can I have been there in, in this situation with, you know, all these dignitaries through, you know, and it was just, like, amazing. The atmosphere was just electric. You know, people were just, like, in awe of the whole Westminster Abbey. Um, and it was just a, an amazing experience and, you know, really honoured to be there. You were with the heads of state, the royal family. Did you get to see any of them in the Abbey? Would you believe we got to see them all? So they all filed past. Um, so obviously with the coffin that, and everything, you know, that came in. And then obviously the, the um, royal family and then the heads of state. So we saw it all. You were invited because of the work that you do with female charities. How much does that mean that the Queen recognised your brilliant work? It, it's amazing. I mean, Freedom for Girls has only been a charity for like four years. We won the Queen's Award for volunteering last year and I've won an MBE uh, the birthday honours list this year for our work with um, people uh, with you know who are suffering period poverty and period dignity. So yeah, we're really really honoured, and I'm really really honoured that all our hard work is paying off. And actually, you know, the Queen is a, a people's person, and that she recognised you know that there is issues in the world you know around just not just the UK but the rest of the world, and to you know to, to have that recognised by the Queen was absolutely awesome. It was amazing. You have those orders of service with you, don't you? Let Show them to me. Let's have a look. There you go. Gosh, I'm sure they're going to be kept somewhere really safe. They are. What will be the moment that you remember most about today, Tina? As soon as the service started, the whole atmosphere in, in the Abbey changed. It all of a sudden went really, really cold. There was a smell, a different smell came around. It was really strange and really surreal. An atmosphere that you'll never forget, really. An incredible experience for you. Tina, thank you. Well, Nancy O'Neill was also invited. Nancy, how was it today? Oh, it, it was unbelievable. It was absolutely amazing. I've never in my life expected to be invited anywhere like that, but not expected it to be as, didn't expect it to be as spectacular as it was. And you can feel the weight of history, I think, as you walk in. 
And to go in and feel that, still feel that weight of history and feel that you're part of making history was, was unbelievable. Um, and the, you could hear the pipers and the drummers come in and you could hear it very faint and it got louder and louder and louder till they were right outside the door. It was so impressive. It was emotional, it was sad, um, but it was also a bit of trepidation, a bit of excitement there, you know, it was a bit like um, doing something I've never done before, but a lot of emotions and I expected it to be an emotional day and I think it will sink in in the coming days and, and weeks. Nancy, when we spoke last week you talked about representing your NHS colleagues there today. Were, were they in your thoughts? How much of an honour did it feel to be there on their behalf as well? Yeah, they were in my thoughts all of the time. My health, health service colleagues, my social care colleagues. Um, I did feel as if I was representing them. Some of them had specifically asked me to think of them and to think of, um, you know, send their prayers and their thoughts as well. Uh, yeah, it, and there was plenty of time for that. It sounds like an incredible experience. One thing that you will remember and treasure for many years to come. I think I said to you last week, I'll oh, probably be in a corner at the back, out the way, out of sight, out of mind. Um, I could literally have touched the coffin as, as she went past. Um, and that, but above all, I think that lone piper, I don't think I'll ever hear anything like that in my lifetime again. Oh, you've given me goosebumps. Tina, Nancy, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. Gosh, what an incredible day for them both. For many who wanted to be in London, it was, of course, just out of reach for many health reasons. Our reporter, Michelle Lyons, spent the day at a care home in Hare Hills in Leeds. A poignant day for residents at Berkeley Court in Hare Hills, Leeds. For them, Queen Elizabeth was the second monarch they'd known in their lifetime. In 1952, they learned of her father's death, King George VI, through newspapers. And today, they watched his daughter's final farewell from the comfort of their care home. We've all been here right from the word go, watching, you know, seeing that the king died, the coronation, all the big events. Yes, so that's lovely. Lovely that we can all be together to share it. Since the other day when I heard that she's passed away, it breaks my heart because she's a beautiful person and she has a beautiful smile. Since the Queen passed away, the care home has been encouraging residents to share their memories of her. A book of condolence sits on reception and photographs of her adorn the walls. The past 10 days have been a time of sadness and reflection, culminating in today's moving ceremony. It just was very poignant when the procession came in and everyone saw Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Um, I think they were just, everybody just gasped um, just to see them because it's just so, so sad. It's when you see the children that you feel the saddest because it's always the ones that are left behind that you feel for. For one couple, today has been memorable in more ways than one. Malcolm and Christine are celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary. They held hands throughout the service, thinking too of their grandson, who was part of the military parade. It's a big day for us. It's uh, our actual wedding anniversary today, which was the 19th of September. Yeah, it's been a very emotional day. Uh, my grandson, James, he's in the Royal Air Force and he was on ceremonial guard at Buckingham Palace and he's in the parade today. So you must be a very proud granddad. Very proud of him. Very proud of him. Me and Grandma proud of you. And as the service drew to a close, the residents took part in a resounding rendition of God Save the King, lyrics they'd sung before many years ago. Then, time for silent reflection. A celebration of life, love and longevity. And afterwards, tea and scones, in keeping with the Queen's own traditions. Michelle Lyons, BBC Look North, Leeds.
Now, the Bray family from Home Firth are big royal supporters. They decided not just to go down for the day to the funeral, but have been in London all weekend to play their parts in history. They kept a video diary of their experience. Take a look. Hello, I'm Alison Bray from Home Firth. I'm an enthusiastic royal fan and I'm about to embark on a journey which is going to be a very emotional journey this weekend. I feel very, very emotional today. I still can't believe that she's no longer with us. People are saying to me, why are you going? You'll see more on the television. But I want to be part of that crowd. I want to be part of that British history. That will keep me nice and warm, hopefully. It's not going to be too cold. I want to be personally there to say goodbye and pay my respects. Got my chair that I'm going to be sleeping in for a couple of nights. I'm just about ready. I'm here in Green Park and I'm just about to lay these flowers from myself and all my family. Rest in peace, Your Majesty. It's extremely moving, very peaceful. Hi Johnny, are you all right? Are we all set for tomorrow? All set, are you? Yeah, come Back on, come packed. through. Yeah, suitcase yeah. and everything. Tomorrow morning we're going to drive down to Milton Keynes and then get the train uh, through to London. Um, and then we're going to go and meet uh, my mum and her friend. Hi mum. Who uh, are already down there waiting in, in hopefully a prime spot so we can see the Queen on her final journey as she heads over to uh, Westminster Abbey. So we just come off the tube at Trafalgar Square. We're slowly making our way near Horse Guards Parade where we're going to meet our mum who's at our pitch ready for tomorrow. Good morning from Horse Guards Parade on this beautiful Sunday morning and we've managed to get the perfect spot for a view tomorrow and yes we're really really pleased it was worth the early morning get up to get our perfect place. We're just about to settle down now. We've been to see the Queen uh, laying in state and uh, we're going to try and get a bit of shut eye now. Uh, how are you feeling, Johnny? Absolutely shattered. What a night. The headlines this morning Queen Elizabeth II will be laid to rest later following a state funeral. At Westminster. Everything has just uh, taken place. Uh, the Queen's now gone on her final journey. We had a fantastic position today. We saw the military procession. It was wonderful to see the royal family passers and little Charlotte wave to me, which was just wonderful. We've got many memories that are going to last a lifetime. They certainly do, don't they? Well, it's 11 days since the Queen passed and we've seen some wonderful images of her when she made official visits to Yorkshire. We've also seen some of your fantastic uh, pictures as well, so thank you so much for sharing all of your memories with us. Researchers at the Yorkshire Film Archive have been delving through rarely seen footage which they've now shared with us and we can share it with you. Olivia Richwald reports. It was 1949 and the young Princess Elizabeth, as she was then, paid a visit to Leeds and to Round A Park. She was treated to a display of physical training and folk dancing by the children of Leeds. She looks so young. All the crowds are out, obviously giving her a wave. She watches some of the parades and some of the processions in front. And it really is a, a beautiful film that captures that occasion when uh, what seems like the whole city has come out to, to say hello. A film reel 73 years old, which has only recently been digitised by the Yorkshire Film Archive. Since the Queen's death, archivists have been working hard to share these moments of history. This was the Queen and Prince Philip on a visit to Sheffield in 1954. It was filmed by Pathé News. You may recognise this moment when schoolchildren form the shape of the Union flag. But here is that very same moment in colour captured by an amateur filmmaker, Billy Ibbotson, who also happened to be Sheffield's master cutler. His position gave him a ringside seat. 
but it captures on film, on Kordachrome, beautiful Kordachrome colour, the day and the event and the build up to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh coming to Sheffield in their tour of the UK in 1954 before going to the Commonwealth. Uh, and it's just a really lovely record of a really important day for the people of Sheffield. It was a day they'd been looking forward to for so long. And now they were anxious to give Her Majesty a real Yorkshire welcome. Four years later, the Queen returned to Yorkshire and paid this visit to the factory Crabtree & Sons in South Leeds. This film was commissioned by the factory itself. What I like about this film is she really does show real interest and she really does um, sort of seem to be engaged about everything that she's getting to see in this factory. The highlight of the year, um, the highlight of some of these people's careers. Her Majesty was very amused when he described his 68 years service with the company as not very long. What a lady, and to have her captured on film uh, and in our collections for people to enjoy uh, is a real privilege. Wow, such wonderful footage there, isn't it? Uh, we're going to cross over to Paul now. Paul, the weather did seem to hold off for the funeral today when everyone gathered to watch it in our towns and cities. How's it looking for the next few days? Yeah, well, it looks uh, very quiet, actually, uh, over the next uh, couple of days. Some rain to come on Thursday night into uh, Friday morning. Just want to show you uh, a couple of pictures from the weekend because this is absolutely beautiful. Beverly sent that in uh, from uh, Scarborough. And uh, a lovely shot of, uh, you know, vivid alt cumulus cloud there in uh, Hebden Bridge. It's, it's been quite cloudy today, but I suspect we will see quite a bit more brightness in the next uh, day or so. So let's have a look at the headlines then. Uh, variable cloud, there will be some sunshine around. It looks like most of us will be dry. And it's all down to high pressure once again in China. We have to wait until Thursday night if uh, rain is what you want. It's on this uh, weather front. Uh, there'll be some persistent rain sort of late Thursday into Friday morning before the weekend uh, sees a resumption of the fine and uh, dry weather. Now, there has been quite a bit of cloud uh, today, but right now it's uh, really a beautiful end to the day along the coast. Scarborough, uh, finally bathed in uh, sunshine. Elsewhere, quite a bit of cloud, and it may well be that that cloud thickens, bringing uh, one or two spots of drizzle overnight. But most of us should be dry, and we'll see lowest temperatures around 7 or 8 degrees. So tomorrow's high water times then in Scarborough, around about 125 uh, Flamborough Head at quarter to two tomorrow afternoon. So some low cloud first thing in the morning might bring a bit of drizzle uh, to eastern areas, but that will soon fizzle. And then a bright start further west with some sunshine. As temperatures rise, we may well see that cloud uh, increasing. Could be thick enough for the odd uh, light shower across the Pennines. But as I say, we are looking at predominantly dry conditions. And uh, where the sun comes out, it should feel pleasantly warm. We're just expecting a light westerly breeze tomorrow. So 17 in York, perhaps 18 in Doncaster and Chesterfield. That's 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking a little bit further ahead then, Wednesday looks uh, perhaps the nicest day of the week. Dry with some sunshine and warm. We hang on to that fine weather through Thursday, but a risk of rain late in the day. That clears Friday morning. And I think over the weekend, it's cooler and breezy, but mostly dry with some sunshine. That's the forecast back to Amy. Thanks, Paul. Well, that's just about it from me and from all the team at Look North on this historic day, the day that Queen Elizabeth II was finally laid to rest. Good night.